to order. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice.
So having siblings together allowed this parent to support both of their children while also supporting their, their school and with obvious great results. So that's my two cents. Um, in any event, I am incredibly proud of my daughter and this team as they work very hard to earn this, which is also wonderful for Danbury. And I would also like to do thank Dr. Salas and aware the news was put on the Danbury Public Schools Facebook page today, and um, he and his team are working on a press release for the paper. Um, the team also has their own Facebook page, so if you want to follow their journey to Iowa, it's Odyssey Danbury. Um, so please check it out, and hopefully they'll bring home another win. Thank you. Um, Rachel Chileski.
I would hate to see future families torn apart from these, during these critical six years, or worse yet, lost to surrounding towns or private schools. As Danbury residents, we are so proud of the school's achievements and the recent award as best elementary school in the state. Please don't damage our community by destroying the families. We need to stick together. Please keep siblings together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who did not sign up who would like to do?
I got my bronze medal and I was happy as a clown. And I have never felt short again in my life, metaphorically. Well, get to Emory High School, not only do we have these sports activities that are picking up, our cultural types of activities have picked up too. My daughter is in the school uh, orchestra and they just returned from another wonderful trip to Disney. Uh, how those poor teachers survived, I will never know. Uh, but they had a wonderful time performing and everything there, the orchestra, the choirs, and all of that. Two nights ago at the high school, under the direction of uh, Mr. Jose Rojas and uh, Mrs. Rachel uh, Torres O'Leary, the Latino club put on a phenomenal Latino evening. It was incredible. And all those days that after school, when I was working in my room, I heard the kids next door practicing their dancing and their singing. To see them put it all on was amazing. Uh, our teachers who were there will testify to that. Unbelievable. Kids singing and dancing and parading costumes and presentations they made. Just unbelievable stuff. Uh, the play is coming up. Yeah. After school, they're there until 6 o'clock. The teachers are there with them, working with them. You know how good the plays are. And, well, please make sure you come up to them. Uh, another sign of spring, CODA, I believe that's going to be on again this year. Dr. Um, Mike Obrey and his crew put on a phenomenal uh, presentation up there, all the teachers and the students. I hear the ice cream is also going to be phenomenal this year. Uh, <laughs> wonderful things that go on. On the academic side, Registration's done, our core guidance counselors slogging for all of our 3,000 students to get them registered and mixed up, courses children correctly, freshman orientation, and Donovan, our principal would be, led this phenomenal effort, showcased the school, the teachers came back in the evening, showing upcoming freshmen, what a wonderful place this is and all the opportunities we have. SATs went off beautifully. Uh, Sean Colley, uh, leading the team, Gary Kakashi and all the others. Uh, tremendous improvement. Uh, we have high participation. We hope to do well. Uh, the one cap test we have to do, that went off smoothly too. Uh, testament to all these teachers who a phenomenal job getting these things squared away. Benchmark testing is ending this week. Uh, don't ask our students about that. They won't tell you what's phenomenal or wonderful. They'll be moaning and groaning about it. One thing they won't be moaning and groaning about is of course, no exams this year, so they're kind of pleased with that and happy about that. Um, though the benchmarks are really making them show what they can do. Congratulations. Gary Bukachi was the last graduation, a bittersweet one. Dan Donovan coming on. All these are things that are going on in the high school, the teachers are taking care of. And thick and chill. And if you notice, I sort of deliberately split the, the, the fun side of the stuff that our teachers and our students are working on with the sort of academic side. I'm sure we all remember that from our, our days at school, and there was fun stuff, and there was the work stuff. And we try to keep this balance. I mean, we always think that, you know, as teachers, that this is what school is about. There's these two sides, and we need to try to balance them and bring them together. We do that in our teaching and everything else. So you, you can imagine. What a shock it was to me that one day in class, when we were having this great discussion, one of the students actually stopped and said, Wait, you know, Mr. Boss, I think we have become more interested in grades than in learning. We've become more interested in grades than in learning, and that stopped me cold. I, I immediately started to think, what am I doing to me? Why is my student telling me this? Because I guess we've got to watch it in ourselves, and it's so easy to succumb to what I guess is called like a tyranny of numbers. But when I look at my students, I mean, they're my students, but it's so easy to start thinking of them as test scores because 45% of my evaluation is based on this one benchmark test that they've just completed. And we all fight to keep that balance. We all fight to sort of keep the humanity in the picture, to care about our kids and not let them just slip into being another test score. Uh, this balance, we all understand, is tough to keep. Right? For, for many of our students, we know they thrive on the education that they put from. The numbers, the tests are ways for them to do well. They enjoy learning and all that. 
of stuff. And those are the ones that we just give stuff to, and they will grow with it. They'll take it and run with it. Then we also know that we have some students who need prodding, perhaps a little bit of dragging while they kick and scream, and we heave them over the finish line, again, metaphorically. And then there are those students that we have to run alongside of, more and more of them. And we have to have our hands out to help them over those hurdles and to carry them when they come to that. And our Danbury High School teachers are excellent at that. And they struggle to find ways to get that done every single day. The numbers will never show that. Uh, the numbers will never show you. The teacher who knows that getting into the middle of a fight might get the teacher hurt, but the teacher cannot stop because the teacher wants to protect the children. The numbers will never show you the teachers who stay after school, ones who stay till 6 o'clock and beyond on a regular basis, working with students, helping students. I'm thinking of one that I cannot give more detail because they don't want to get specific with people, but my goodness, what dedication, what dedication. The, the numbers will never show you also. The student who came to trust her teacher so much that when there was an abusive situation, she actually dared go and confide in the teacher and thanked the teacher for getting her out of that situation. We try to do that every day. And I'd like to reassure you, the teachers at Danbury High School are phenomenal. They are excellent. They try to strike this balance on a daily basis. I'm proud and humble, proud to be part of that phenomenal faculty, but I'm humble because all I can do is just come here and spend a few minutes and let you know just how great it is these things that they do. My colleagues behind me uh, took extra time to come out. They all give their own time. They all know. And so I come to speak about that. I thank you for listening. I thank you. Uh, for all the good that you do for our students, for our schools, for the Joe, one second, let me read something for you. This is to the high school principal and faculty. This is from the Ask, a favorite group. Um, in order to facilitate the changes in their commission, it is necessary for us to balance the number of schools hosting visits. As a result of this process, your school, which is currently scheduled to host visiting teams in 2018, will be postponed one year and we'll host a visiting team in the county year 2019. So you got another year on this side. They're coming 2019 instead of 2019. One year on. Build up more of the good stuff for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Around a cheat sheet for you right now of um, 
all the programs, and we can start on that gifted and talented on the program side, once that gets around everyone. Um, as Dr. Um, Sal had just spoken, that it is something that um, we have been able to make great strides with. The, I did state the law, um, and as a school district or a system, we are responsible to identify students, which we do each March. The test just happened um, the last couple of weeks using the OSLEN test that we actually take a look at what third graders meet our cutoff scores in the district to provide um, or children that are then identified as gifted and talented. That is the end of our legal responsibility right there as a district. However, in um, keeping with having high quality education and meeting the needs of all students in the district, um, I was given the charge to look at alternative programs both within district and um, outside of district for families. So we have um, three really robust programs right now with our students. One is our elementary um, program, and we looked at what was going to be the um, most cost effective and decided that a Saturday morning program where the children all come to Rogers Park, or not Rogers Park, Gamer High School, would be the best place for um, that program. So I survey the parents each June to see, and the students, what their interests are for the following year, and then we design the program from that. And so we have had everything from dance and theater to hands-on science to a typical egg drop. We use a lot of our community partners. The Connecticut Science Center has come down and done work, the Bridgeport Science Museum, as well as being able to take the children on field trips to places they may not um, have gone before. We do not try to duplicate what is being offered during the day because then it just becomes a new issue. So we look for outside of that. Um, we've had the um, main instructor come down from Mystic Aquarium and work with the students and just a couple Saturdays ago, um, we combined with our Saturday Academy and took a busload of students up to West Rupert, Vermont, to spend the day on a 55 or five, 550 head cattle farm um, with their muddy shoes and muddy pants and to actually see what a working farm is, how the cattle were moved around, they were able to get in and um, experience milking, first learn about it, and then able to actually see the process take place. Um, we had some great um, questions come out of the children, and then after that we loaded the bus and went to two very, very different sugar shacks. Um, and so the um, West Rupert paper followed us around during the day. They opened up, it's a very small town, so they were very, very happy to have us there. And so in their Sunday paper was um, City Meets Country. And there is the coach bus next to the sugar shack. Um, the West Rupert Fire Department opened up their building that day for us to be able to come and have lunch and bathroom and washing their hands and everything. It was a wonderful experience. So for all of the children, they received paperwork on, you know, tell us about what you learned about the sugar maker. Okay. A lot of the students and the parents, we have many parents who are uh, with us, were very, very surprised that it's 40 buckets of raw sap, or, you know, yeah, sap that makes that one gallon of syrup. Um, they got to see how all the machinery worked, all the filters that take out any impurities. Um, they were able to talk to the farmer about some of the children were really into the economy of having a farm and was it a profit making business and were absolutely absolutely sur surprised that the um, farmer takes a loss on milk production because right now we have a surplus in milk in the United States. So their children got everything from hands-on to um, economics of milk production to watching a great movie on the bus to you know having you know feedback and great time with the parents as well. So um, at the middle school level the program meets right after school. Um, our Rogers Park is probably our most robust program of Bernardo de Castro. Down there, who's a teacher, has that program going. They work a lot in the garden. They do all kinds of things all year long. Again, the teachers there and at Broadview um, survey the children as to what they want to learn and then take it to the next step. We are still working at the um, New Westside Academy to um, recruit staff for it. 
Um, for next year, if we're not able to do that, then the students are very interested in doing the gardening at Rogers Park. So we'll work with the bus company to be able to get the students there um, to do that. So that is um, the overview of the gifted and talented program. Another survey, we have two more um, um, trips. They'll be going to Hunt Farm in Reading to do water quality testing down there, and then we're uh, two weeks after that going to the New York Science um, Hall um, for the day. And they'll be doing some PD down there. The teachers will be doing some PD. It's a wonderful place um, for some of our staff to go, as well as the children will be engaged in programs too. So um, we're excited about that program. On the flip side of your handout, I've given you some information about the Danbury Family Learning Center. I think the last time I was here, we spoke about how it had become incorporated and is now 501c3, which is a tax status that allows corporations to take 100% of the benefit of whatever they donate to the school system, whether it be um, products or um, financial backing. Um, I gave you some information more on the goals and things like that, but operationally, um, we want to ensure that um, we're fiscally stable. We do operate under a board of directors um, that meets almost on a monthly basis and attends a lot of the um, activities we have. Holly was at our family university um, last weekend. Um, and then we looked at, at three different areas. One is outreach, the second one is programming, and then community initiatives. So our outreach is part of the whole goal of what that building is all about at 49 Osborne Street. It is the hub building where most families <coughs> new to Danbury come to. Um, we've been working with um, Kim in centralizing our registration there. Um, we did do a update on our calls and our visitor traffic. We have about 4,000 visitors that come in a year in the building and last year we had over 4200 phone calls come in just to the literacy line um, or we call it the literacy line the learning center line about Danbury schools where do i go what do i do you know those very beginning questions when someone comes new into the district or is about ready to register a child um, other outreach that we do is we now have a column in the Tribune newspaper. I get feedback every single time, the columns every other week. Um, we touch on a whole bunch of topics. I ask parents what they're interested in learning about. It's everything this month will be on positive discipline, um, summer learning loss, all those different types of things. And I get feedback many times in Spanish, and so we get it translated um, so that we can answer parents' questions or answer them directly back on email. Um, we are also collaborating with a lot of our community agencies. This morning I was um, honored to take one of our um, newer people in the district to a community agency gathering where you sit around the table and you listen to what different agencies do in Danbury. And so that was a wonderful opera, um, opportunity for the staff person to hear what's out there to be able to answer those questions for parents as well. Our next area is all about programming. And our biggest thing is our seven to eight play groups a week um, where parents come with children birth to age five on Thursday night and Saturday. We have children and families come with older children than just five years old. Um, it is a regular play group. Parents stay with their parents. We do circle time. We sing. We have snacks. There's a parent education piece embedded in every single play group as well. It might be um, coming up, windows will start to be open. We'll talk to parents about making sure their screens are safe in their windows, especially for families that might live on the second or third floor um, of a building. Um, we touch on using the 5210 curriculum with the families and healthy eating, healthy lifestyles, um, regular routines, developing those routines with their children, getting them to bed early, the importance of attendance, all of those, all those things in multiple languages we help deliver that to the parents we now have many many parents and, and my new parent coach that's in the center was a parent um, for many many years and she brought her children to the center and now she's in that next role so we're empowering parents um, to grow and um, we're able to attract families and see now that they're part of ptos they're part of school governance councils and they're really taking an active role um, in their child's school so that that's really important um, we're also funded by the United Way for the Park Avenue Strong Start program. 
that had that had, was a summer program last year. It is going throughout the school year this year, really concentrating on that school. There's a parent educator part-time at the school, lots of activities, lots of parent engagement opportunities and education opportunities for the parents. And so we're looking at things such as our children registering on time for kindergarten, what are the levels that children arrive at kindergarten, are we seeing better skills for the children, and are we able to see that, that my third grade children are on grade level reading. Um, family University took place last Saturday. We had 100, 100, we served 140 plates of food. So that's our that's our count. We have many walk-ins. Um, we still will continue to reach out to families. This year was a different format. We didn't have the overall keynote, but we had families and children do things together. They were making homework boxes, fire engines, um, learning how to have conversations with their children and nonverbal conversations. So I have some great pictures I'll put all together and get them sent to you. But it was a wonderful day. The parents enjoyed the food. They enjoyed getting to know other families that might be going to their school. And there's a lot of parents here that don't have children enrolled in the school yet. So we're trying to move the curve a little bit on that so parents are understanding the importance of early education and that we want them to feel comfortable in our schools. Our next one is our Saturday Academy. And that was an outgrowth of our gifted and talented program when a parent would drop off a child who was um, identified as gifted and talented. They'd say, okay, what do you have for my other child? And so these are all different types of workshops and activities that we do with the children on Saturday and with the families. Um, it is a fee-based program, so parents pay for it. We have a very small amount of scholarship dollars. We try not to exclude anybody. If somebody shows the interest in coming, um, we certainly want to do it. Um, it's one way of expanding that school day, too, for children. Even though it's on a Saturday, we've had a great turnout. Um, parent education is a huge piece of what we do. We um, support Denver Children's First and the uh, PLFP. Parent Leadership Training Institute. We also do People Empowering People, Positive Discipline. I'm going to leave after this to go congratulate the uh, class of about um, 20 graduates tonight. This is our first class um, run between Ellsworth and Town School. We have 10 English parents that are graduating and 10 um, Hispanic parents or Spanish speaking parents. Uh, we offer Lace the Ross, um, Opening Doors, many other parent trainings. There's a cycle that goes on in conjunction between us and the Extended Learning Program and our 21st Century grants that have to go to these type of things. Um, we've been fortunate this past year to be funded by the Grossman Family Foundation out of um, Greenwich, Connecticut. And so we have um, 18 teachers at eight of our elementary schools that are K and first grade teachers that um, took part in six and a half hours of PD. They will have another six and a half hours at the end of May and 18 hours each in class coaching with the, um, the presenter, Viva Merlinstein, um, well known for her curriculum, um, follows the uh, model that we're using here, and so she has been able to spend um, time with teachers in the classroom actually coaching them, observing what they're doing, coaching, and then either using other teachers that are in the project as models or whatever. Um, and I'll more of a report on that. The other piece that was also funded was a family liaison for Ellsworth Elementary School. Cynthia Wind is there pretty much full time. She works very closely with the social worker, the principal, and the school psychologist to um, reach out to those families that may uh, be having any health issues along with the nurse, any chronic absenteeism, anything like that. So she makes that call. She is bilingual. Um, she'll visit a family or some of the families come into the school and talk to them about the importance of school, hook them up with whatever resources they have. It's a very similar model to what we have at South Street and Moore Street with our family resource centers as well. Lastly um, is the community initiatives. Um, by charge of Dr. Sal, um, I serve on the Promise Partnership for Denver Children's, um, which is a community collaborative looking at moving the curve on um, stopping chronic absenteeism, uh, school readiness, and then helping parents be educated. And so we have uh, decided over the last couple of months to relook at our very lengthy 
strategic plan, and I'm really excited to, to say that we are now down to a three-page strategic plan, which I think from 48 pages, so I think will be much more manageable, and we'll really be able to see um, the difference in the next couple of weeks. We have received funding through Grossman, United Way, Graustein Foundation, and as of yesterday, the campaign for grade level reading, which Stanford Public Schools is a member of, and we will begin to use their scorecard or their report card to be able to report what we're doing in that birth to grade eight um, with moving the curve to getting um, all those three issues um, stopped or less, um, some of learning losses in that too. Um, the last two things are our business partnerships. Um, we're really happy to say that um, we have some wonderful business um, collaborations with Praxair. They are funding the real program. Um, started it three years ago at Park Avenue. This year they were able to extend it to um, King Street. We also work very closely with Pitney Bowes. They are a funder of the Learning Center. They will be doing some projects with us in um, September and October, as well as they do different things at different schools. We will be doing an audit um, once this, the school year calms down a little bit to see what other companies are working with us. Um, we will be reaching out to some of the other bigger companies, um, taking people from those other companies that are working with us already to try to get more companies on board. We, we know they're interested. Companies now are starting to call us and say, what can we do to help? Um, we're not doing as many searches for grants. We're, they're now starting to come to us and saying, how can we help? So we're, we're, we're really excited about that. I invite you all to the walking school bus on um, May 4th at 7.30 in the morning. We'll kick off with some opening statements that morning um, by the mayor and Dr. Sal at City Hall. A walking school bus is a model that's been used in many of the cities where people are um, designated to certain streets and they walk along from their starting place to their school and they pick up all the children along the way. So envision if I'm a mom at home and I have a newborn baby and the baby is sick and it's raining out but my child walks to school, if I can't get out to get that child to walk to school then my kindergartner stays home. Um, and so this walking school bus model, these are the adults in some school systems. Um, New Britain has one, Wall Wallingford has one. The gym teachers go out and they are walking the school buses. And so there's no vehicle involved, it's actually walking. So you're helping children to get some of that physical energy out on the way to school. You're helping families to get their children to school, which then of course works with um, the absenteeism issue as well. So I welcome any of you to join us at City Hall starting at 7.30 and we will walk um, up to Park Avenue School that morning. But lastly, what I'm giving you is we, as a city, are really working on a whole model that's called collective impact. And so I'm giving you um, Alan Grossman's newest, the latest work. He's revised it several times now about what collective impact is. Um, right now, the workshop I went to a couple weeks ago with Alan Grossman really talked about it from a business perspective. And so I think we have some real opportunity at this point to reach out to the businesses. This is a model that we are using here in Danbury. The new strategic plan of the promise is going to strengthen that. And so I ask for you to all give a read on it, give me some feedback on it, and um, come visit us. We had Ralph and Michael was uh, were at the Learning Center the other day. Come visit us, come play with us. We, on the back of the calendar, which I hand distributed, um, that is our typical calendar of play groups that we have. And on the back, we'll be having our uh, Mother's Day um, flowers, and we have a couple other events coming up on that. So. Um, I just want to say, like Ann mentioned, we, Michael and I had the opportunity. And I apologize, I wasn't there. I that's okay, you. that's okay. Yeah. Lauren did a great job. Right. Um, what you guys do, I mean, we've heard so many good things about it, but to actually see like the building, meet your staff, and see the play group in, in action, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great thing, and your staff there, you could tell that they want to be there. They're very, they're very enthusiastic, and they, they very, they, you could feel how comfortable the place is, and you could feel 
you know, feel well. We, we, we felt welcome in the parking lot. It was, right. it was you know, just, I, it's kind of hard to explain that to experience it. But I just want to say thank you and, and, and you know, your staff is, is great. And just please pass on to them that we were, uh, you know, it made us feel right at home. We right. appreciate that. Right. Thank you. you know, it's, a, it's a tough parking lot. And yes. so we do have a new, we call them security officers. Safety, safety advocates. Safety advocates who's now out there handing out the signs that park on Fifth Avenue because we have a collaboration with the city that nobody has to pay a toll for parking. Good things. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, one more question. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can talk loud enough, probably. And I just wanted to say that, that I probably met Ian, what, two or three years ago. And I have with the... Um, it's the both boss um, in the playroom with, I think, my oldest, who's now nine, um, and then joined the board of directors for Family Learning Center. And from the from the beginning, where you know we were trying to figure out where grant money was going to come from and funding the 501c3, um, I have to see where this, this is right now. I don't know if anybody can really see and understand how far this has gone. And what I think is like three years from from what I, where I think we started, just five years total, but. Um, and we did the family university this weekend, and um, my kids were all over the place. Um, but it was it was fantastic, and uh, there were a couple ideas. And one of the seminars that we went to, I think I talked to you after mm -hmm. that I'd like to discuss further and bring and present mm -hmm. to the board um, for some of the ideas there. So I want to say thank you because I know, and, and I know Lauren Daly very well, and I know how hard everybody works there. And um, I don't think anyone really sitting in this room probably knew all of this and how hard you've been working and how many parents you're reaching. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for all your support in, in doing this. Really, it means a lot to the city. It means a lot to me and, and the staff that work so hard in the building. And it's it's not just me. It's a whole collaborative approach for everybody in that building yeah. from Sodexo to help the family fill out the green reduced form, to understand what that is to our extended learning programs, our 21st century programs. Registering for school is huge. That's a huge step. Some of you have been parents and you know how jittery you feel, letting go of your babies at first to be able to go to school, and it really, um, it's turned into a really great building. So come back after school vacation, there's gonna be some more um, work done there during the vacation. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, we have no action items, so we'll go right into Dr. Pascarella's report. Hey, thank you. Uh, first budget update, <clears throat> we uh, did have a subcommittee with the, um, the town subcommittee for the budget. As you know, our request of 5.2 5 to 5.3 was not given to us. We were given 2.2 to work with at this point. So we have a three million, 3 million plus cut to deal with. Um, in addition to that, last night, um, well, between that meeting and um, yesterday, we made a visit up to, uh, we went up to Hartford. And uh, we, we met with our lobbyists. We've been meeting with number of uh, Nancy Wyman been meeting with the um, Speaker of the House. Um, we were very fortunate in a few towns that had restored to it their ECS money. So it's close to $900,000 that's been restored in that area, which is a tremendous help to us. It'll help us mitigate that three point something million that we have to reduce in the budget. As of last night, however, the, uh, the town of Danbury received $3 million less even though the school was kept hold with this money. Um, that's going to have some impact, and I don't know what that is at this point. I don't think the mayor knows at this point what it is until uh, he goes through each area. But next Wednesday night at uh, 7 o'clock, the 20th, there will be a budget meeting, I suggest. Uh, people go there and listen in. That's the time to uh, testify if you want. Our approach has been to work with the city. Uh, not in a negative way, but in a positive way to bring resources to the city. Um, and we have excess cost for special ed uh, has been reimbursed at the full level. That increases money to the city. Mark's been diligent in helping us with um, the indirect costs to try to reallocate it back to us. If that happens, that could be worth another 300000 for us. So that was one of our items to negotiate with. We've asked a restoration of the ACS, if that happened. And uh, we also asked for 80% reimbursement on our high school uh, addition. If that happens, that's $1 million less a year for our bond, which uh, we stay in the city. 
that we don't know about. We're still working on it in the legislators. Um, so all these things are supposed to come to some type of an end. First week in May. Um, someone talked about transparent in the budget. I have no idea what's going to be transparent or not at this point. What's going and what's saying. So uh, everything is, is up in the air. So I, I'm very cautious about not saying things. As, um, as quick as I say one thing, suddenly something else happens. So, and so that first week in May, we'll have an idea of uh, how much we have resource-wise, and then we'll go about the business of um, making that number. Uh, we have some ideas, obviously. The captain has been working on it. Their priorities, the district has been uh, put forward, and that has been teachers in classrooms. That's still a priority. The classrooms now are growing 27, 28, 29. That's now. They will go higher. We did this a few years ago. And you know, the budget keeps being rehearsed. Uh, we have support the faculty that are in that classroom that are really the vital. Um, we'll have to look at all of that. I we'll want to look at uh, every other tangent thing, things that impact the school, but not directly that. Uh, so those things are all up in here at this point. So, um, that's the news I can give you. The other thing we were told very possibly, appropriations uh, suggested a budget. The budget financial in Hartford suggested a budget. The governor has a budget. That may now create a whole new budget. So everything might be back to zero. We don't know. So that's why I caution everyone to be, just be mindful. I'll be there next week to hear what the mayor has in mind. But that's the municipal budget. Uh, the real impact in the budget for us is the state budget. Uh, we met with the legislation delegation. I put the notes in there for you. Uh, we had a very good meeting. Uh, the mayor and his staff is there. I was up there. Joe was there. And we talked about our strategies. And right now, all the testifying is done. So everything now is done one-on-one -on -one and uh, negotiating. Bob Godfrey has uh, uh, been active uh, with us, and, and he has quite a bit of um, maneuvering up there in terms of how how things go through the legislature. And he's on our team. He's helpful, along with uh, our county and the rest of the folks. Uh, Michael, the senator, has been helpful. Uh, when it comes to Danbury, there's no Democrats or Republicans. They're not working together, and that's a good thing to see. The lobbyist was pretty impressed with that as well. But the minutes are in there, you can kind of read for yourself. I met with Nancy Wyman. Um, I think, you know, she's, there's, what we've asked Nancy to be very careful of is the governor's put resources into the cities that uh, he'd be very mindful of keeping those resources intact. Uh, and because education was at the forefront of uh, his agenda. If you look at the CJF case that we're testifying in, the state's philosophy is we give the city their, their, Allocations on ECS different than the um, the other 100 and, say 150 gallons, and therefore um, we are meeting our obligation in equity and access. The governor's budget last night took all the money away from all the cities and reallocated it to the uh, lines to the uh, to priority school systems. Um, that money was given to them ECS when it was frozen four years ago, and they've had it every year. Um, but he's the, I call it the Robin Hood principle, thanks to the risk of support. He went and got that money and did it and gave it to us. So that's where we're at right now with that. The Connecticut School Finance Project, that's Katie Roy. We're part of that. That's our, that's our effort to change um, the law and see if, if even if CTS goes forward and we prevail, seriously doubt if we're going to get all that money. So maybe there's a halfway mark that we can work with adjusting for indigent students, you know, our average now is 50% of the kids are pure new science. We have schools at 70% um, and see if we can have some uh, reimbursement based on PLLs. We have the highest, second highest population in the, in the state. 42% of our students are Hispanic, 39% other. So um, you can see that, uh, you know, we, we qualify for more funds. So we're trying to get, and also mobility rates kind of high. So if those things can be put in, into the SECS and we, and we get some funds, that might be the best we can do. So we're, we're active in doing that, very active. I also put in here 
We have grant writers who put another person in but we have a service. You can see all the grants that we keep pursuing, you know, um, and we can get some of those grants. We're looking for grants that really will help us pay for salaries. We're not looking for just grants that for need me and the rest. Um, and, and the grant writers have been prolific in writing, but not too prolific in receiving. But we're going to keep the efforts going forward. Um, there are smaller grants that we get, but we really need the substantial ones for three and five years so we can plan to uh, some of our programs. This evening we have the high school project we're going to be for on later. Um, administrative study, uh, we did have, a, I did mention to you, we um, had a group come in, look at our organization, see if we could better support the teaching and learning piece, and they made some recommendations for some adjustments that we're looking at. We also uh, had a reading audit done, uh, K-8, and we made some adjustments in terms of our support for the uh, teachers and the principals and also some division of, of work so we can get more of our efforts at the lower level. We have a high number of kids coming into middle school that really are deficit in skills, and we really need to get to a better, uh, in a better focused way, and they uh, put us in a good direction to do that. We're gonna rebalance what we do at the middle school a little bit more, uh, doing a team approach to our language arts and our reading. So, you know, we're, we're, so we have a plan to be working on that as well. So that, that's ongoing at this point. Um, I have nothing else. Question? Okay, so I'm for, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Pascarella. I'm for information. Um, just the last day of school is set to be June 9th. And then we have graduation dates in front of us. So these on June 7th, Private Park. Um, it's the first one on June 8th at 12.30. West Side Middle School at 2.30, Broadview at 4.30, and then the following meeting, June 9th, is Denver High School um, at 5 o'clock. And then we have adult ed on June 14th at 7. Do you want to add on? Yeah. No, I guess they're gone to one. Okay, good one. Okay. Yeah, they've gone to one server. Okay, under board uh, chair's report, uh, Memorial Day Parade is on May 30th. Um, Dr. <coughs> Sal, has to be, do we have any plans for that? We plan to be there. <laughs> I'm looking at Anne, she's we'll helping me out with it. Are we going to get the uh, yeah, wagon? We'll make it work. All right, great. So, yes, we'll have the wagon. It'll be um, down by the new condos. Yeah. Because there aren't supposed to be any kids, but we'll be, we'll be gathering there. Decorated well. It should be decorated well, right? Just make sure it says the word event this year. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can read it. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so that's May 30th. I'm sure we'll have more info on that in the coming weeks. Um, then also on here um, is just discussing our June meeting. So we typically meet the second and fourth week of each month, and there's a proposal here to change that. Um, in June, so we meet the first and the third Wednesday so of that month, uh, mainly due to uh, graduation being done um, just graduation much earlier this year than years before. Um, so this would be this would work much better with our schedules. Um, so we're not allowed to vote on this now, but it needs to be on the agenda once or twice. Yeah. What, uh, once for information? It'll come on next time for. Um, so it looks like next board meeting we'll vote on this, and it's basically, yeah. There'll be special meetings, yeah, which yeah. means that the agenda has to be fixed. When we get there that evening, we can't have it. Yeah, so they'll be posted as special. So the dates for those would be June 1st and June 15th. Look. Chair, first, did we change the date for maybe then? May the 4th. I think it was May the 4th. Uh, so that has been excluded. Uh, uh, what was the movie? Oh, the. Oh. Uh, that's a workshop. Yes. No, I have that. That has not been excluded. Okay. My knowledge. Right, Kim? Right, right. So we're still on with that. Yes. It's always been in the previous minutes, so that's why I asked it. Okay. 
Thank you, supporting that. There has been discussion mm -hmm. to maybe move to the fall, and there was discussion. Right. And remain. He needs to come in and set for the summer negotiations. Okay. Uh, so yes, so the June meetings will be June 1st and 15th, and it looks like if we accept this at the next meeting, um, we'll do a retiree reception um, before our June 1st meeting. So that would be at 6 Thursday. Okay, board reports. We've had, I think, two committees, but correct me if I'm wrong, we bring in the evaluation and sites and facilities this evening. There are no other reports, right? So who wants to go first? We did have a sites and facilities meeting this evening. Thank her uh, face to face, but 
Um, we got some other ones planned in the next couple weeks, and um, if anybody else wants to join us, it's always, you know, we'll, we, we'll email whoever expresses interest. We should go on Mondays and Tuesdays and kind of make a day of it. So if anybody wants to tag along, you're more than welcome. And um, what we find is staff and, and principals and everything, they just they love seeing you know, board members there and love um, just for you to come in and see their building because they're all so proud of them. And, and uh, you know, that, that, that's a good deal. So, that's it. Just to add um, to that, uh, the Family Learning Center is really a hidden gem, I think, in not only in the district but in the city. Um, we found that when we went on Monday, so I'm very glad that we had the opportunity to go there. And I'm um, upset we took so long to get there because of how good um, and welcoming it was. Um, and just to meet with Mr. Donovan at the high school and understand the Freshman Academy a little um, better was also a great meeting. Um, and to know after today's meeting before this um, about the high school expansion, that the new building is basically going to house most of this freshman academy, not all of it, but a lot of it, um, is also very exciting because to see the work that's being done there um, and then to have this new building to do that is, um, is great. So, any other reports, PTO updates, anything like that? Okay, so we do have executive session. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening.